This is the Baofeng K6. It's the latest handheld two-way transceiver from Baofeng. So I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you about $27. You haven't paid me for my review, and my opinions remain my own. All right, so in the box, you get the radio itself and a lot of accessories. So we have the snap-on battery pack here. We also have the extended long antenna, as well as the regular short antenna. You have the push-to-talk hand transmitter here. Um, you also have a little earphone lapel type mic transmitter here, so you have an option of you know, remote accessories there. There is a USB cable here that plugs into the side as well. Um, and you have the optional clip which will go into the back of the battery so you can clip it to things. And it includes a wrist strap and a desktop charger where you can charge the radio, you know, just dropping the radio in and it will charge it. Um, the battery and radio can also be charged just directly by a USB-C port, which is a nice feature. Now, the big difference between this guy and some of the previous radios is that it can transmit not only in UHF and VHF, but also the 1.25 meter ham band. So that's the, the real reason you might be upgrading from one of their previous radios to this particular one. So the first thing you should know about this radio is that to use this legally in the United States, you need to have a ham license, um, or at least I should say to use it to transmit legally. You can receive anything you want with it. There's no license required for that. But to transmit, you need to have a ham license. Um, you might be tempted to you know, put it on the family radio service or MERS or GMRS. Um, this radio is not licensed to transmit on those frequencies. Um, and so you definitely will want to be using using the transmit inhibit function if you don't have a ham license on this. All right, since I don't have a ham license, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on Channel the transmit off. forbid. Um, so once you spin this guy to turn it on, which also adjusts the volume, you push the menu button menu. and it'll start at zero and you can basically go up through all the different menu options. Number 10 is the TX forbid, you push the menu button again and it has a little arrow here so now you can go up and down through the options and the options are on and off. So you say, hey, I want this R and you hit menu again, confirm. it'll confirm it. You can exit out of the menu if you want to check. You can menu. go back in and you can see transmit forbid is on. And so now this guy won't be transmitting. So to access weather radio, you turn it on. Channel mode. And then you press and hold the zero underscore space key. On. And it'll go to and it will go to the weather mode. Now by default it starts out at weather channel one. You'll have to push up and down to find a channel that is broadcast in your area. So about half of this radio's weight and bulk is the battery on the back here. Um, so it does transmit at six watts. If you're not using it to transmit, this battery as a receiver will last a long time. Um, so with the longer antenna here, the whole package weighs in at about 10 and a half ounces or 298 grams. So they include the longer high gain antenna and then the regular antenna. Um, if you have a strong transmitter, the regular antenna is just fine. As you can see, the weather radio is strong enough you don't even technically need an antenna to hear it, although it gets a little fuzzy there. So on this powerful transmitter, I'm really not detecting a difference between the high gain and regular antennas. Now I've found that for the FM band, the regular antenna works better than the high gain antenna. 
So you can see here the same station is much clearer with the regular antenna and the FM band. So to go into FM radio mode, um, as pre-programmed by the factory, this top button, if you push that, will go into the FM radio mode. Um, and you will have to use the up-down buttons or type in a frequency to reach a particular channel. So this is a little AC charger, um, and it charges just fine, but if you put the radio in while it's charging, there is some electrical interference that gets picked up by the radio and makes it a lot fuzzier. It's perfectly fine for charging the radio, you know, sitting there, but you may not want to be running the radio while it's plugged into the AC power. So the light on the front here turns to green when it's fully charged. All right. So supposedly tonight at 7 o'clock on this frequency, we'll be able to pick something up. Because I've got that frequency programmed in. Okay, I've been pretty impressed with this just as a receiver. You know, it has a pretty low price point. You can pull in the NOAA weather radio. You can listen to FM stations. FM radio reception, I don't think, is quite as good as a FM radio that's dedicated for FM radio, but you can certainly listen to things. Um, and I was able to listen to ham radio operators in the local area, like we were having hurricanes and they were talking about who was losing power and who had power. Um, so it definitely does what it's supposed to do as a receiver. I haven't been able to test it as a transmitter, but at the low price point, I'm pretty happy with it just as a receiver, although it has you know, convinced me that I should go and um, work on my amateur license. So I hope at some point in the future, I'll be able to evaluate this as a transmitter as well.